Okay, bingo. It's about science and likable science. And when you want to do a show about likable science, you want to have a likable scientist. Okay, that's Ethan Allen. I'm Jay Fidel. He's the host guest, and I'm the guest host. Okay? <laughs> I'm going to talk about nuclear fusion today because, you know, why not? <laughs> <laughs> there was an article in one of the uh, science uh, journals that we saw involving this kid named uh, Jackson Oswald. Oswald with a T right, at right. the end. In, uh, in the, state of, the state of Tennessee, which is near where Oak Ridge might have been <laughs> or still is, you know, doing nuclear things. Um, and the story about this kid was that he's 13 years old or not quite 13 when it happened, and he designed a nuclear fusion device in his home right. um, with a very loose supervision of his parents who were only concerned that, you know, there might be nuclear radiation. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and you know, he's working the super high voltage uh, things too. Right, and, right, and all that, yeah. And so, I mean, it's, it's remarkable. It's, 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 in the, it's in one of the red states, if you will. <laughs> It's in a state where you don't expect the, uh, you know, science education to be that mm -hmm. good. And yet this kid goes out and I guess he reads up and he finds out how to do it and he, he does this. And, and there was some question about scientists who had to certify that mm -hmm. it actually worked as nuclear fusion. Right. Um, but ultimately they did find a scientist who said that it was right. a legitimate uh, fusion device. There is an open source fusion research uh, consortium that apparently sort of certifies whether or not you achieve fusion, and at least one of their one of their verifiers looked at his data and basically said, "Yes, yeah, so you, you, that you really it, is." You know. Okay, so um, so we and thought he, he is the youngest person now to have ever done this. Yeah, I mean, it's like you know, to Ripley's build. believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. It, it is amazing. After I saw this story, I I googled. I was reading up on fusion reactors and the fusor, which is what he built, the, the chamber that you you do in sort of an approach. And you can just Google directions for building a fusor, and it pops right up as, you know, it's a do-it-yourself project. Here's the materials you need. Here's how to do it, you know, da-da-da-da-da. Why do I feel if, you know, the science, uh, uh, the science fair is coming up, I think, in April or maybe mm -hmm. April, yeah, at the convention center right. where 700 kids are selected right. from around the state, yeah. present their yeah. projects, you know. Yeah. Why do I feel if some kid brought a, a, a nuclear fusion device down to the science fair, there would be kind of an issue somewhere about somebody complaining well, there, would, there would be yeah because, wonderment you know because you are using a little tiny bit of very mildly radioactive stuff in it uh it's know. enough to scare the pants off <laughs> <laughs> in a state where you can't have nuclear power without a specific vote of i think it's three quarters of the members of the legislature right, right. Well, it's not not nuclear power I mean, he created nuclear fusion he, his his device and all of these fusors Take, use much more energy than they ever give out. They, they're terribly inefficient in that sense. Okay, they, so that, and that opens the whole door to our discussion. Right. Okay, our likable scientist, <laughs> Ethan Allen, the host of Likable Science on Fridays, um, is going to tell us a little bit about what this is, what this means, how you do this. And, and you can take notes and try to do it yourself, <laughs> but don't bring that project to the science fair. <laughs> okay, I, I will be very surprised if, if it does come to the science fair. So what is nuclear fusion, Ethan? So in simple terms, nuclear fusion is the combining of two atomic nuclei together into one. And that process, if you do it with the right nuclei, uh, releases a huge amount of energy. You are familiar with nuclear fission, that is, which is the splitting of big atomic nuclei, and that releases a lot of energy. More. Uh, that was a whole bunch of energy. Fusion is far, far greater. Fusion releases really much more, much more. Per, per unit weight, yes. Oh, oh, okay. Now we're all getting really <laughs> interested and a right. little concerned. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is why the fusion bombs, the H-bombs, are, are bigger than the A-bombs, basically. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because you, you can get a lot more bang for your buck, as it were. Ooh, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this conversation is um, particularly relevant because Mr. Putin has said, that, you know, he's rearming because uh, uh, Mr. Trump pulled out of the uh, arms uh, treaty for uh, intermediate yeah. missiles. Uh, so uh, Putin is going ahead <laughs> with his project. And, uh, you know, we're, we seem to be closer to uh, a cold war uh, and a war, maybe a hot war, uh, than we've been since the 50s. 
uh, and you really wonder about, about the president, yeah. you wonder about Putin, of course, and the strange relationship between them. But then that's Mr. Mueller's concern. <laughs> right. We'll find out soon what that relationship is. Right. Anyway, so in a, in a world where nuclear power and nuclear bombs are still relevant, uh, any experiment in Tennessee or otherwise involving nuclear fusion, which could be the process by which a bomb would function, um, is very interesting to us. Right, right. Now, there's, there's two things. There's uncontrolled nuclear fusion, as in a bomb, and as in really what happens in the center of the sun, basically what powers the sun is fusion. It's, it's cramming a bunch of hydrogen together and smacking it into making helium. It, uh, every second in the center of the sun, about 600 trillion tons of hydrogen are converted into slightly less mass of helium. Uh, 626 trillion tons of hydrogen ended up being 606 trillion tons of helium per second. And those, that extra 20 trillion tons, basically, is all comes out as energy. And th this I can do in my bedroom? <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> but uh, we did, we figured out how to do something sort of like that in making the H-bombs, the hydrogen okay, bombs, okay. Which, which basically... Uh, in essence, you're taking a, a, a light material like lithium or deuterium and putting it in the center of an atomic bomb. So your atomic bomb goes off and it, as it explodes, it pushes inwards on this light stuff and crushes it down and forces these light atoms or light nuclei that want to repel each other together. And then they combine, they fuse, and their explosion overwhelms the A-bomb part of that. Did you say lithium? Yes, like the like the like yes. the compound, or rather the uh, the element in yes. a in a, in a yes. battery. Yes, exactly. Lithium is one of the good things. If you want to do fusion, you, you you probably end up using some lithium or beryllium or helium or hydrogen. You want small light uh, elements for mm. fusion. You you confuse big heavy ones, but you get no energy out of it. You actually you lose energy in the process because of fairly complex. So, so let me see if I understand. I, I mean, how do you detonate this bomb with the with the lithium and the beryllium in the middle. That's why you, you put it in the middle of literally in the middle of a uranium bomb, a fission bomb, very carefully geometrically packed so that your uranium or plutonium goes off all at once and it's perfect in a perfect sphere or a perfect rod surrounding it and just crushes the, the material from all sides. The uranium crushes the lithium in the center lithium. of it. Lithium. You know, the, the power of that explosion, I mean, you see, you've seen what an A-bomb explosion looks sure, like, sure, right? Sure, sure, So imagine in, in a little space this close to it, you're just crunching that down to nothing, right? Right. And that, that power of, that crushing power is what actually forces the nuclei of the light material so close together that they, they will fuse. And it's, so it's that that actually right. detonates the explosion. And that, right, and that... That fusion itself releases tremendous energy, much more than the shell of plutonium exploding around it. This is, you know, this is why these bombs are really big bombs. Big, big in terms yeah. of kilotons and all that. Yeah, yeah, they have huge, huge massive yield. Um, again, it's a, it's a, so it, it's, it's, to get in the, in the nuts and bolts of it, right? So atoms are the smallest component of matter, right, that have properties. Atoms have electrons on the outside, but they have the nucleus, which has protons and neutrons. Protons have a positive charge, neutrons are neutral. They are stuck together by what's called the strong nuclear force. But protons, being positively charged, will repel other protons. Now, in an in a atom that has several protons in it, the nuclear force, strong nuclear force, overcomes that and holds the things together. But trying to drive another proton into that nucleus is very, very hard, right? The, the protons really repel each other. You have to get them very, very, very close together where that strong nuclear force and, will and take a, over. A lot of force. A lot right. of force to drive them. Right. And, and that's the point with the lithium. There's a lot of force driving the right. atoms in the lithium T together, right? The, that, the, the force of the atomic explosion just outside of them, driving them all into the same spot. And this is... But there would be an atomic explosion even if there were no lithium. Right, right, yeah. But it wouldn't be as big. Right, exactly. So this, this sort of enhances the explosion. Right, it, it boosts Ooh. it, yeah. But this is actually, it, it's a, a nice sort of segue because the, the fusor that, that Jackson Oswald built basically is a, is a, a sphere with two, electric, with two grids inside of it, two spherical metal grids, one on the outside and then one very close to the center. And 
Then Jackson essentially evacuated the sphere, made it completely a vacuum, put a positive charge, well, ran a little tiny bit of tritium gas or deuterium gas into it, put a very big positive charge on the outermost grid and the negative charge on the innermost grid. So With electricity, huge, electrical huge, charge. Huge voltage difference between these things. Yeah. So the atoms then were literally ripped apart with the, the protons from this deuterium, hydrogen protons essentially heading towards the negative uh, electro electrical point. On the inside. Right, on the inside. And as they're all whipping down towards that, some of them run into each other and fuse. <clears throat> they run into each other in the center or in the, ex the outside periphery? No, it's in the center. And that's why, uh, and then there are a few extra neutrons released in this process. And they count those neutrons. And that's how they know fusion happened because the neutrons wouldn't wouldn't be released unless, and that was the certification right, you're talking about exactly. to make sure that that, that was really a neutron happens. counter and it was working well and yeah okay so this is not we're not using uh, nuclear material in the outside uh, in the outside no uh, just sphere. a little a little bit of gas which uh, tritium is hydrogen with a couple extra neutrons on or deuterium which is hydrogen with a one extra heavy proton. water yeah yeah exactly deuterium and and, that, and that's what's used in the h bomb too is right it? that's uh, where they say h it's, it's heavy right. water yeah, hydrogen it, yeah it's, water. E it's either deuterium or tritium which are both essentially hydrogen but with an extra uh neutron or two extra neutrons so this 12 year old kid you know gets gets this he had to, he had to learn all this stuff yeah i mean yeah he he, he admits that a couple of years before he was just Normal kid playing Ordinary video kid, games yeah. and then realized like he wanted to do something different. Mm, that's spent different. a year or two really learning all these different components that he had to. And then he had to learn skills like welding and, uh, <clears throat> you know, a bunch of different strokes yeah, for different right, folks. Right. Okay, so the outside sphere is going to contain this um, water, I'm sorry, hydrogen with a funny, a funny part to the atom and the hydrogen right. atoms. Well, the outside sphere is just a shell to hold everything together so you can right. get a vacuum so that you can... You a vacuum between the outside and the inside sphere. Right. And in that vacuum, you put some hydrogen yeah. gas. Exactly. With, with funny atoms on it. Right. How do you create that? How did he create that? Um, I'm not sure whether he had to create it himself or whether he could probably buy tritium. Uh, I'm surprised anyone sell it As to, a gas. to a 12-year-old. But, uh, you know. Well, <laughs> you can't buy cigarettes before you can buy <laughs> nuclear material. <laughs> right. <laughs> But tritium again, it, it's a, it's a weak beta emitter, so it, it's it's uh, it wouldn't hurt you it, it, in general. It, it can't get even through your skin. It's it's probably not good to inhale it, but you know, yeah. or swallow a bunch of it. But yeah. uh, you yeah. know. Uh, okay, it, so now that in order to make this happen, mm -hmm. you have the hydrogen trillium hydrogen, uh, and you're going to want it to penetrate the smaller sphere. What, it, yeah, go ahead. What, well, no, there's, there's only the outer sphere is is a, is a shell. There, okay. it, it's the gas is now loose in in this other otherwise vacuum. Yes, an electrical charge comes on with a very very high voltage difference with a, a negative a negative pole in the center and a positive charge on the outside. Not a lot of wattage though. Uh, it's just presumably voltage, vo okay. voltage okay. but but big big voltage, many thousands of. of and you can volts. with a transformer, you can get that right, right out of the plug exactly, in your exactly, house. Exactly. The one twenty plug in <laughs> your house. I suspect you maybe had to do a little extra. Yeah, thing. I mean, I'm not suggesting that you guys <laughs> should do this, but at least you should understand what. Uh, right. What was his name? Jackson, Jackson Oswald. O uh, Oswald did. Right. Okay. Oh wait. We're going to take a break. Okay. We're going to take a break so that it all settles down. You can finish writing your notes. We'll come back. We'll I'm continue. A quiz. <laughs> Just 10 questions. Multiple choice. We'll be right back. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. 
We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. What a kid, 12 years old. You know, what did you do for your science project, Jackson? <laughs> I'm sure that it's not, not that he's the first one, but he's probably the only one who ever did that. <laughs> so let's go further. So you have, the, you have this uh, shell uh, of, um, uh, of hydrogen, trillium gas, okay? And, and now you're going to uh, aggravate that, activate it, with high voltage electricity that you right. can get from the 120, 120 plug in your bedroom. <laughs> if you crank up your, you can, your crank up a transformer right. to get that, that high. Right. How high do you know? Uh, I forget. It's measured in the thousands of electron volts. I mean, it's, okay. it's way up there. Really high. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, now, now the, the gas is activated. What happens? Right, so literally, because it, the gas, gas atoms are bouncing around and they feel this huge electrical field, the electrons all head off one way to the positive charge, yeah. and the protons all head off the other way to the negative charge. Which is a smaller, right, in the smaller center. sphere. Right. It's a, it's, a, it's a point, roughly. Ideally, you have a, a zero-dimensional point in the yeah. center, ideally. Yeah. yeah. Because so, it has to be perfectly round. It, it should be. And then you can should, achieve the point. Yeah, in, you, in, should, you should have it roughly spherical, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, literally, the electrons are stripped away from the nucleus, and you have what's the, the atom has been ionized then, and you have a, what is called a plasma then. It's the fourth, fourth state of matter, that is solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. Which is what? Is that what, light what, gas? What, it's a light a gas, but it's a highly energized gas okay. where, where the, or it's all ions. It's no longer whole atoms. And what is in the center again? What is, what just, is just, it's, a, it's a, a negative charge, a negative electrical point. So all the, all the protons are now hurtling down towards that point. If there's no, there's no actual material. Well, there's, I mean, there's got, got to have some piece of metal as an electrode to okay. have that charge but, on. But you're not filling it's, it up with any particular no. element off the, tape, the table of per no. periodic no. elements. And as these protons all converge on this point, now moving at a high rate of speed, they have some of them, a few of them, have enough energy, they knock into one another and fuse and produce a new heavier element, probably helium. They create a new atom. Right. They when they atom. fuse, they create a new right. atom with, a, like helium. with a new alignment of, of right. uh, exactly. atomic material in the middle. Right. right. And, and usually in that process, it kicks out a neutron. And that's actually how they, what they sort of, they have detectors that count neutrons. And when they see neutrons being emitted, they know that, you, you know, by calculating correctly, you know that you had some fusion occurring. Okay. As I say, it's highly energy inefficient. I mean, it, it pumps a tremendous amount of energy into this to get literally a handful of uh, fusion events. So it's not, it's not e efficient. No, no, not in the least. You know, I'll tell you the truth. We had a, we had a professor from UH. This goes back mm -hmm. in the early days of think tank. We had a professor of UH. I'm not sure he, he was really elderly, actually. Very emeritus kind. Mm -hmm. And uh, he spoke of fusion. Mm -hmm. And he spoke of fusion as potentially source of energy. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. So how does that work if it's inefficient? Well, fusion, having fusion as an energy source has always been 25 years in the future. It was 25 years <laughs> in the future back in 1930 when they first sort of thought about it. It's been 25 years in the future ever since then. Some things never change. Right. There are a couple of experiments now running that's ITER and, and, and a couple of these big things. They believe they're getting, and they, they are, they're making progress. That they're being able to get plasmas now hold plasmas in confinement better, get, get them dense. They make these plasmas and they set up strong magnetic fields to compress them into, into very tight uh, rings and, and then run them around very fast and slam these beams together and get more and more collisions happening. And if you do that correctly, you can begin to get significant amounts of energy out. But they have not yet achieved what's called break-even, where build this thing and you pump tons of energy into it, they're getting close to break even now. They're getting some that, that are putting out a good deal. Of so the ratio is changing. The right. efficiency is changing. Right. So someday the right. 25 years may be there, less than yeah, 25 in, years. In theory, I think in 2029 they're supposed to have, uh, they're supposed to hit that, uh, hit that point or something. Is this better than nuclear energy itself? 
such as we have in well, reactors? It's, it's a different form of nuclear energy. It, it's fusion instead of fission. So is it better than the kind we're using yeah, in it, nuclear reactors? Yeah, it's certainly better in the sense that you're not dealing with a lot of things like uranium and plutonium, these, these really toxic, long-lived, heavy, very highly radioactive things. You're dealing with stuff like tritium and deuterium, which it has some mild radioactive stuff. and you, you Short half-life. Right, and you're creating, relatively, yeah, and you're creating... By bombarding things with neutrons, you're creating things that then re-emit neutrons as radiation, which is not a really grand thing. But again, sort of relatively, they are much less risky than typical atomic plants. And yeah. You, you don't worry about them overheating. Indeed, the, the problem is to get everything stable enough to make it work. You know, yeah. That's been a huge technological challenge. Yeah, yeah. But if they could do it, and maybe someday they will, with the help of kids like this, right. <laughs> um, then maybe we could find... A nuclear energy we would trust yes. that wouldn't blow up. Right. So what's the worst case analysis if I do it wrong? Um, you know, I put that high charge into the uh, hydrogen trillium mm -hmm. thing, and uh, it hits the point, and it goes haywire. What can happen? I mean, relatively little. You, 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 what you probably the probably what happens is you ruin some hideously expensive equipment, and, <laughs> and you cost yourself tens of millions of dollars, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars, and set your experiments back by years. You don't years. necessarily kill anybody. But no, no. Uh, again, sort of as soon as you break uh, the conditions, it's, again, it's better to do that in vacuum, and they do it with the magnetic fields. Everything just sort of falls apart because your magnetic fields break down, your vacuum is ruined, you, you get a little bit of tritium or deuterium gas leaking out, you know, and again, uh, some surfaces that might maybe are emitting some neutrons, being where they shouldn't. But you know, so, it, so it's relatively minor compared to the, the potential for nuclear, nuclear power. Nuclear power, power plant, or, uh, or bomb. fission, fission yeah. plants. Yes. So and what's what's interesting? I mean, you know, one of the thoughts that I get on this is that we haven't really taken nuclear power down, um, you know, a, a peaceful mode. This is still what we're using now in nuclear reactors. Is still the technology that they use in nuclear bombs. It's still the same thing. Um, well, I mean, it's, there, there's fission, there's fusion, yeah, and those processes are, are, are the same, yeah, the same Sorry, processes. It yeah. seems to me that if, we're, that if we're, I mean, just this opens the possibility that we can play with uh, nuclear material in a way that's not so dangerous. We can play with nuclear yeah. material where we can get an efficient um, right. energy result, uh, a long-term. Uh, right. A cheap energy result right. and maybe solve a lot of energy problems yes. without risking anything. You know? Right. So they're, they're working on another type of fusion experiment where you take a little tiny bit of tritium gas and you put it in a very thin shell of gold, a little thin go gold bubble almost. And you set that position it very carefully on a little stand and around it you have a bunch of high powered lasers all pointing right to that little gold shell. And then you blast that with all these lasers. They blast in it, and literally the, 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 it causes, again, it, the laser powers, pushes that tritium together, and the tritium goes bang, basically. It, it releases a bunch of energy. If you could harvest that energy, uh, it's a whole different design, uh, which has the potential, if, if it works, to be very good, because you could just then bop, bop in another little gold bead, and bang, do it again. Bop another gold bead, bang, do it again. And you've got the power for the lasers, but if you're your break-even point might be a lot lower. Yeah, so efficiency. Right, and again, a few years ago, well, now quite a few years ago, Pond's inflation had, uh, you may recall, the cold fusion uh, or debacle. They thought they had a desktop, tabletop kind of thing that would, would produce uh, fusion energy, uh, would produce the neutrons showing fusion energy with really sort of simple lab benchtop equipment. Uh, yeah, but that, that was never... Uh, replicated sufficiently. Uh, I mean, many people that work. Well, there's, well, there's a tremendous stigma, you know, on nuclear energy, and look what happened, you know, in uh, in Japan a few right. years ago. Uh, and the bombs, of course, scare you, scare our our whole society right. forever. Um, it's beyond deterrence. It's it's real because <laughs> we've seen it happen, mm -hmm. and so uh, and, it, and it does incredible damage for an incredibly long period of time, and it ruins the the Earth, the environment, and if we ever have a nuclear war, any kind of nuclear war, we'll, we'll see that in spades. We'll see that far greater, uh, far greater scope, scale. You remember uh, what Albert Einstein said at one point, very famously, he said, I don't know what weapons are going to be used in World War III, but I can tell you that World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. Right. Too fast, yeah.
But <clears throat> to getting weapons, if we can right. do some more creative research. Atoms for peace. Yeah, atoms for peace. <laughs> we can do energy, and, yeah. and that affects climate change, doesn't it? Yes. That, that, it, also, it also helps an economy of a given state, which is doing it because in a state which has cheap energy uh, is, um, is a better economy. Yeah. Everybody knows. So this kid, you know, raises those questions. This kid with his, with his home kit raises those questions. So you were telling me before the show that you can find all this stuff out on the Internet. Right. It's scary what you can find on the right. Internet. And that's what the kid did at the age of 12. But I mean, literally just, just Google directions for fusion reactor. And things will pop right up, yeah. sort of giving you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it, what you need, how to put it together. Yeah. And, and he went to the, 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 the hardware store and yeah. eBay, yeah. and he found the necessary Same things. He had to materials. do some adjustments and modifications. And he had to do some, some iron work, right? Some, yeah, some welding work. and electrical yeah. wiring and yeah. things like that. But. Yeah. But he did it all himself. Yeah. Uh -huh. And his father only said, keep that nuclear material away from me. <laughs> yeah, his father wanted, wanted him not to get sick or hurt or <laughs> contaminate the household. <laughs> Reasonable. I think most dads would say that. <laughs> In fact, most dads wouldn't let this happen at all. <laughs> right, no, he, he's got to have supportive parents for sure. <laughs> so, um, you know, this really goes somewhere. Uh, I, you know, uh, I'm thinking that we are doing uh, atomic research. Um, m maybe in uh, Oak Ridge. I don't know if it's still going mm -hmm. on there. Uh, we, we did it under, under the bleachers uh, in Chicago, the Manhattan Project. Mm -hmm. and we did it in uh, 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 Los, Alamos. Los Alamos, which I think is still there. My mm -hmm. wife and I visited. We had a tour of mm -hmm. Los Alamos a few years ago. Mm -hmm. It was really interesting. And I have a tingle in my skin. I'm <laughs> no, only kidding. <laughs> and of course, we did some of our testing out in the Marshall Islands. Oh, yeah. Bikini well, Atoll and we talk Atoll. And, yeah. uh, if you really read Simon Winchester's book called Pacific, huh. yeah, there's a couple of chapters there uh, dedicated uh, to what happens to a given environment when you start blowing up nuclear material. Huh. Huh. And those places were damaged forever, oh, actually. Yeah, yeah. Some, uh, of the, some of the bombs were sort of duds. Instead of, you know, in good fission reaction, basically all your fuel gets vaporized and you don't really leave too much bad stuff around. But in a bad one, you know, big... Chunks of your material are sort of half vaporized and half melted and strewn about. And that's what happened there with a number. Yeah, yeah. They're and terrible. They, and they've scraped all that together into what they call runic dome and, and covered it with concrete, basically. And that's now leaking. That's oh, concrete no. into the me. water. Yeah, yeah. The water that flows right. in our direction. And there, and there are people living about 15 miles away from it on the other side of the oh, lagoon. Oh, they must be affected. Well, Ethan, I, you know, I, I, to me, I think uh, we maybe we don't spend enough time thinking about nuclear for peace mm -hmm. um, and nuclear for energy. I think it was Hitachi uh, that was engaged in making small nuclear reactors that would be put in the ground and uh, they were very small, the size of a Volkswagen. Mm -hmm. and, you, uh, and Fred Hemmings in the uh, state senate at the time was uh, advocating uh, for that for Hawaii, uh, especially uh, you know, in island, an island state, mm -hmm. to have these things. One of those things, the size of a Volkswagen, could run a whole a whole island, right? Um, but we didn't do that, and I don't think Hitachi is doing it anymore. Um, we have other fish to fry. We have solar. We have wind, and so forth. But maybe there'll be come there'll be a time um, when we'll take a closer look at that. Um, I guess the first order of business, though, is to stop global war. That's the first order of business. Yeah. So um, I, I hope I hope this kid has the opportunity to study it and learn more. I hope yeah. more people see what he's doing and maybe get somehow, um, you know, interested in a, a better science around nuclear energy. Exactly. That would yeah. be, be good. Great. And that's, and that's the uh, takeaway from our show. <laughs> better science from nuclear energy. Thank you. You're a likable scientist. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Always Ethan a pleasure. Allen. Aloha.